I, you, you're asking me, does God have the right to do that? Yes, I, I would say that God has a right to do that. Okay. Then but to God. say to, but you said, but you God said, God just I, wants believers you, to. Sometimes God will want believers to engage in expansionist war. You just said yes. That's not, no. Look, God could subjugate the entire world, for, as far as I'm concerned. If God wanted to okay, come down great. here and and take so that's, over the that's world, that's morally valid. That's not my that's objection. That's morally valid. That's, that's morally not valid. my objection to Islam. First of all, yeah, the question, we know your your objection is, to Islam is that Islam is not true. Yeah, we know that. Like, yeah. what kind of? But the thing that you do in your videos and in these debates is that you want to portray Islam as unjust. You want to portray Islam as somehow violating a moral code and doing something that's morally objectionable. And therefore, Islam is false because it commands something that's morally objectionable. My response logically to that argument is to say that, no, you do not have a moral objection to expansion or war or violence or subjugation or discrimination or persecution, you do not have a problem with that morally because your own religion has advocated for it. And right now, just two minutes ago, you conceded that sometimes God, yes, he will command uh, believers to engage in those types of behaviors. So your argument collapses. Your argument, it has no legs to stand on. That is the whole point that I'm trying to get you to recognize that you're just arguing in a circle. Yeah, you, you're going to fall back on the idea that, oh, well, Muhammad وسلم, wasn't a true prophet. Okay, yeah, that's a separate debate. Okay, but the debate that or the kind of reasoning that you employ is that Islam is false. Why? Because Islam commands its uh, followers to do unjust things, to do things that are contrary to human morality. But that, you can't make that argument. Why? Because according to you, Jesus also commands sometimes people to do exactly this kind of behavior that you're criticizing Islam for. And in fact, Jesus is commanding more than what Islam has required in the past. So you don't have a moral objection. That is the entire Point. And getting back to the subject of the debate. Wait, look, can I answer? Can I respond to that real quick before? And then you can go. go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. Okay. So uh, massive straw man of my argument. Um, I've said in the past repeatedly, if I thought that Islam were true, I'd have to be on board with jihad. So it's not Islam is false. It's not Islam is false because it calls for the violent subjugation of the world. My position is not Islam is false because it calls for the violent persecution of Christians. Um, mo the vast majority of the time, if I'm talking about jihad and uh, what Islam commands, it's a response to politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers and lots of Muslim organizations and lots of Muslims, uh, Muslim speakers, Muslim preachers who say Islam is, is religion of peace and tolerance and Islam has nothing to do with any of this. That was the mantra from the time of 9-11 on, that Islam is this religion of peace, I'm trying to show over and over again from the Muslim sources that that's not what Islam is. So this is not, so notice that's separate from the issue of Islam being true or, or false. I'm saying it's false to say that Islam doesn't teach these things. Islam does teach these things, right? So that's separate from the issue of saying with the it's, subtext, it's false. With the subtext that look at the these crazy barbaric Muslims are you are you trying to pretend that that's not the whole subtext of all about, of I mean, your videos? There there are crazy <laughs> barbaric Muslims. There are crazy because if you're barbaric, honest, you're honest. There, you there say, are crazy look, barbaric, Islam all kinds of does Islam does teach these things like persecuting the uh -huh. heretic or the blasphemer. Mm -hmm. If you're honest, you say, well, guess what? In the Bible, also Jesus has also commanded this in the past. Notice if if someone that would be the honest thing to do. Listen, that would be listen, the, listen, 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 listen. If someone instead said, of hiding okay, it from your listen, audience, listen, I'm 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 granting what you're saying. If someone were to say the Old Testament never taught such and such, and the Old Testament did teach such and such, then it would be perfectly relevant to, to point that out. And you, you could be you could point that out whether you believe in the Old Testament or not, whether you think it's it, it refutes the Old Testament or not. Look at your comment um, section. Look at the people who are commenting on your videos and saying, yeah, look at these crazy Muslims. Look at how barbaric Islam is. Why don't you point to all your thousands and thousands of commenters on your videos and say, hey, hey, guys, calm down. I'm only pointing out, you know, what Islam is about. We have these same exact things in the Bible. Jesus has, is, is cool with all these things, too. There's no real moral objection here, despite my goofy videos. Why don't you say that? There, there, there's, uh, there's obviously a there's obviously a problem. I'm saying that, look, these practices of expansionist war, at one point, God allowed it. 
Okay, fine. If you want to say that's not applicable in this day and age or, or after Jesus, uh, there's a new covenant, fine. I I'll concede all of that, uh, of that. But you can't say inherently there's a moral problem with violent expansionism. And so much of David's um, videos and his missionary work basically gets mileage off of this kind of unstated assumption that, yeah, uh, violent jihad is inherently immoral. He gets so much mileage out of that because he's taking advantage of the inherent liberalism of his audience. And this is something dishonest. He should be honest with his audience and say, hey guys, as, as he's done in this debate, like when, he's, when you push him and you confront him, he has to concede it. But hey guys, look, uh, this is something that is acknowledged in the Bible. David should recognize that and teach his audience that, yeah, expansionist war, it, God has allowed that at certain points. So it's not inherently immoral. It's not inherently evil or unjust. And as a matter of fact, every group, it, once they get power, they will want to spread their influence. And I asked David if he, if he were the king, would he influence the world by you know, having Christian Christianity be privileged and having Christian values be privileged? Like, wouldn't that be a sensible thing that every Christian would automatically say, yes, of course, if I had that kind of power, I would want the, the, um, you know, the, the words of God Almighty, Jesus Christ to be the highest? Wouldn't any Christian acknowledge that? But apparently David is not that type of Christian. He thinks, no, no, no. Neil Nazis we can prevent from being in government, but Christianity, uh, everyone should be equal. We can't prefer Christianity.